Hello and welcome. Today we are going to continue our tutorials on shell scripts, particularly the bash shell. We've looked at a lot of things. Definitely watch the previous videos I've done in this series, catch you up on what we're doing. In the last video we looked at if then statements, looking at values of stuff and writing them out if this, then that, else this, el if that. Well, we're going to look at a shorthand way to do this. Uh, this can lead to cleaner code. Everyone has different opinions. I like doing things in shorthand, it shortens up the code a little bit, uh, but also allows you to check the value of different things like the output of a command, which is what we're going to start with. So follow me to the terminal and we're going to work with the bash shell. I am in a directory. If I list out with ls, you can see that I have a file called file.txt. As we learned in previous videos, we can see what's in that file by using cat, which is short for concatenate. We're going to cat out that file. We can see what's in there. I've got a list of names that I've made up. Now we also learned about the grep command. Grep, I can look for Chris. And good practice to put this in quotations even though you don't need it. Uh, in this particular case, we're looking for only lines that have Chris. Now I can also look for lines that have Smith. And we get the lines that have Smith. But what happens if I want to check does this file contain a string? If so, do something. If not, then do something else. Well, every time a program runs, it has what's called an exit code. It can be uh, successful or unsuccessful or the two main types. So what we're going to do here is what we can say is ampersand ampersand. If we do that, it's going to run the next command only if the last command exit true. So I'm going to say echo name found. Boom. So here we have the output. It found two names and then we it says name found. Now if I come in here and I change this to lowercase s because it's we don't we aren't telling grep to be case insensitive so it's not going to find a match or yeah we'll just do that. It's not going to output anything because it's only going to run this next command if the last command was successful. Now we can change this to two pipe characters. Remember, one pipe character takes the output and puts it into another command. If you do two together, again, no spaces, we can say name not found. And it X enters name not found. If we were to change this back to a capital S, now it outputs it, but it doesn't say anything. Again, control L or type clear to clear the screen. Let's go ahead and do this again. So name found. What we can do now is we can combine this. We can say pipe symbol, pipe symbol, echo. Let me move the text down a little bit. Not found. Okay, so what we're saying here is, okay, use grep. Look in the file text for the word Smith with a capital S. If it is successful, then echo name found. If it is not, then echo not found. And we got name found. Again, if we were to change this to lowercase s, it's going to say not found. And we get don't get any output because there were no names in there that match. Now, let's say we just want to continue this without displaying those names. Well, what we can do is we can wrap this like so, which is basically it's the same as writing if then, okay? And actually, oops, put that in the wrong spot. But right now, it's just looking at a bunch of text. It doesn't know this is a command. What we want to do is put this in dollar sign and parentheses. What this is saying, and I believe I mentioned this in a previous video, when you put something in dollar sign parentheses, it's going to run this command, and then this will actually equal whatever the output of that command is. Doing it this way will not show the output of grep, but just return whether it was successful or not. Name found name not found. Let's go ahead and create a script. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, but as always, use whatever text editor you prefer. I'm going to call this script2. We are going to start start with our shebang line. Again, this is the first line, pound exclamation mark, forward slash bin, forward slash bash. This is telling the system, this is a bash script. Use the bash interpreter, the bash program found here on my system to run this and read this line by line. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is 
our command, which was grep, right? We're grepping for Smith. And we're going to look at the file.txt. If we save this, make it executable, and run our script, whoops, dot slash. Remember, dot slash just means it is in the current directory. It's just going to run the output of that command. We could put that in the brackets like we did at the shell, but it's a good habit to create variables. So I'll just call this name. Really, it's not name, but what I'm going to do here is put that into a variable. I guess I should call it names, right? Because it's going to return more than one name, most likely. Now I can say echo dollar sign names. So we're running this command. Whatever the output of that command is, is now going to be in the variable of names. And we're going to echo that out. So it returns the same thing, but it works a little differently. So now what I can do is I can just say brackets around that, OK? And again, these spaces are important. You'll see here in Vim, I have color highlighting going. And if I do that, actually, it doesn't if I don't say if I was going to show you that it shows me I have different color schemes. Anyway, make sure you have a space here and a space here. It is now checking. Does that variable contain anything? OK, we're going to say echo well, names found pipe pipe echo well, echo names not found okay so we're going to run this script it's going to run grep look for smith in the file file.txt it's going to put whatever the output of that is into names if it returns something true, it returns some names, well, then it's going to echo names found. If not, it's going to echo names not found. Let's go ahead and save this, run our script, and it's going to say names found. Let's change this so that the user's actually inputting something, okay? So now I am going to say read dash p, enter your name name. We're going to change this to names or name. And then we're going to say, OK, if they enter the name, we'll say hello. Hello dollar sign name. If it fails, it will say fine, comma. Don't tell me your name. Now I can run this. I say now a lot, don't I? Enter a name, I can say Chris, it should say hello Chris. If I don't enter a name, it says fine, don't tell me your name. So this is shorthand. Again, if we were to write this out fully, we could say if, then, else, and end it with an I, uh, uh, FI. So this is the same thing, but just written across multiple lines. and. It's up to preference and also what you're doing. If you have multiple things you want to do, uh, sometimes this is a better option. If they answer the name, maybe you want to do a bunch of things. But you could also create a function, which we'll talk about in future videos, and just call that function on a single line and then continue uh, with that. When I can, I like doing it shorthand. It's a matter of opinion. I'm sure people have strong opinions about it. I personally don't care which way you do it. I just would shorthand it. Uh, but I wanted to go over that because you may see that. And you may not, you know, maybe like what's going on. So to review, we can get the output of a command and pipe it like this, not pipe it, but two pipe symbols means it's failed to greater than or uh, uh, ampersands means it it's true. Do the next thing and true. And if we were to line it up like this, we can say echo false. And of course, this is saying, was it successful? Then do this. If not, then do this. And it's not just the grep command. Any command you run can will output whether it was successful or not. And you can just run it as so. And this can become very useful when you're checking the values of stuff. Grep was just an example there. But I hope you learned something. This is just kind of a side from our last video, a little side notes. And again, if we go into our script, you'll see this a lot. 
which in a lot of languages you're like, yeah, this makes sense. I have an if statement with indentation looking at this stuff. Although uh, bash is not case or indentation sensitive. So you don't need those indentations. It's just a good thing to have for readability. Um, but in a lot of my scripts, you'll, I won't have if and then. I will just do it shorthand. And so if you're looking at my scripts, I want to make sure you knew what was going on there. I do thank you for watching. Uh, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris of the K. There's a link in the description there. You can check out uh, my website where you can search through my videos. There's a support section there. We can support me through LibrePay, uh, Buy Me a Coffee, Patreon, PayPal. If you can't support me that way, like, share, subscribe, comment. I thank you always for watching. I hope you continue watching more videos in this series to come. And I hope that you have a great day.